this is uh, located in the comprehensive mental health building. So we have our providers and our um, MAs go to provide services there. We also have Swope Health Northland, which is in Riverside, Missouri, as well as Swope Health Tri-County. Again, we do uh, provide services there part-time. And then we have another location at Swope Health Hickman Mills, which is South Kansas City. Um, <clears throat> and so that's our website below if you would like to learn more um, about Swope Health. So this is just um, information, like I said, about Swope Health. Um, um, we are a, a patient-centered medical home, also known as PCMH, and then we are also recognized by uh, NCQA. We also are accredited by the Joint Commission as well as HRSA, um, which are pretty major for any healthcare organizations um, to stay accredited. And SWOPE has continued to keep those accreditations. We have not lost them in the plus 50 years we've been um, open. Um, so <clears throat> if you would like to go to the next slide, Jackie. I'm going to let Jackie take over from here. Okay. Our mission is Swope Health improves the health and wellness of the community by delivering accessible, quality, comprehensive patient care. Um, so we try to um, make care visible. We make care visible is our mantra. And so we try to make sure that our um, facilities and our um, associates are welcoming and inviting and we try to treat everyone as we want to tr be treated ourselves so we try to deliver the best care that we can for the community and we don't turn anyone away no matter of your socioeconomic uh, situation so if you can't afford care we invite you to come and visit our um, centers there's one that's closest to you and we also have transportation so um if you need um, transportation to um, go to your um, appointment, appointment, we provide it. So that's just one thing that we do in our, we try to make sure that our associates are representative of our client uh, population. So we try to employ people who are diverse. Um, so hope health improves the well being of in individuals. This is our and I just, as I said, the socioeconomic status is we don't turn anyone away. So this is our main location located on Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard, formerly also dual name Blue Parkway. <laughs> it's right about five or 10 minutes off of the plaza. You can get to us off 435. You can get to us off Highway 71. And we are centrally located. We are right off Brush Creek. Uh, so we are accessible by bus. Um, mm -hmm. And we try to make sure that, you know, everyone can get to us. And so our associates have found that this is a good location because um, everyone, not everyone has um, transportation. A red, the Toreco's being fancy with this typing down here. <laughs> so this is just some of the statements that somebody has said to her in previous um, they work here because, you know, they're all full of, they're passionate and um, about fulfilling our vision and helping people and communities improve their circumstances. So we have a lot of good people who work here and we're always looking for more that are good um, and want to serve our clients. So our clinic support representative, that is what's also known as a patient services representative. Our, our titles kind of, you know, have been a little bit updated, but it's still um, the clinic support. Um, and their job is to be the first face of the Swope Health. And so, you know, they're the um, first impression okay. specialist. So um, intensive mental health tech. That is a psychiatric technician position that is direct care. We work, we have several 24-hour um, 27 days a week residential facilities. And we are staffing that position um, with um, qualified individuals um, and our job description is located um, on the website and the basic um, mental qualification is you have to have a high school diploma and someone in a maybe a CNA role or a patient care tech or someone who has worked with people with maybe disabilities or needed some little extra help, that would be the perfect role for them. And we have recently upgraded this rate. The minimum recruitment rate is $16 per hour. And so it goes on up according to experience. 
um, the community support specialist. That is a um, case management role. So they hold a case and they help um, uh, clients navigate through uh, resources in the community. A lot of the, um, the patients are referred to services here. We have ambulatory. So our ambulatory side, that's where you would go through adult medicine. Um, we have pediatrics. We have uh, OBGYN. Um, so we have uh, psychiatric services, we have therapists and um, a whole um, behavioral health department. And so we navigate them through our integrated services here at Swope, Swope Health. And we, um, if we don't have something that is not here in what we like to call our one-stop shop, we will help them navigate maybe to some resources like um, um, homeless, our homeless population, we have homeless case managers. And so we might um, help them um, get into a homeless um, shelter. Uh, food, we help them maybe navigate some services for um, commodities or the food pantry and other things. We have an employment a specialist a position too that is similar to our community support. So we will help them uh, navigate on um, hooking up with employers. So we have medical assistance. This is um, certified or non-certified. Um, so we do accept certified and non-certified. Is that correct, Reiko? So right now um, we do um, look for certified. And what Jackie means by that is like, if you went to school to obtain your medical assistance certificate, we also, in addition to that, we will also for you to be certified like a national registered certified medical assistant or a certified clinical medical assistant or a national certified medical assistant. So there's various ones and they're very easy to obtain. Um, a lot of schools do offer this through various programs such as the National Health uh, Association or the National Association for Professionals. So those are uh, opportunities that um, you are able to take those certifications and um, the organization uh, is pretty competitive when it comes to pay. It, this medical assistant is really key to the organization because they are the ones that assist our providers such as our nurse practitioners and our physicians and our psych and our uh, psychiatrists um, to triage and take vital signs to prepare the, you know, the patient while they're um, receiving services. So they are, just like Jackie kind of spoke about the clinic um, support representatives being the first um, person they encounter, the medical assistants are the second people that, that they will encounter as well. So they have an important role in the organization. And we have opportunities um, at our satellite clinics, as well as our ob guy clinic, our pediatric clinics, our adult medicine. So we definitely are looking for medical assistance and we're pretty competitive with hourly rates as well. Yes, and the nail assistant position is similar <clears throat> to the medical assistant. It is assisting in the dental clinics, assisting our dental hygienists and assisting our uh, dentists. Yes. Um, yes. And so the licensed uh, practical nurse, the LPN position, we're always yeah. in need of LPNs. Always. And patient, the, what I want to say about the medical assistant, the dental assistant, and the licensed practical nurse, all these can be obtained within a year. So if you, um, I don't know if WIND has some um, connections um, or if you work with different programming like FEC, they have different programs where you can attend and become um, and start a career mm -hmm. in healthcare. And it we don't actually offer that um, that program, but we can if someone contacts us, so we can definitely help, help them, them find navigate. That. Yeah, okay. help them navigate and find that. Yes. So these awesome. are programs that can be like a dental assistant or a medical assistant. I think it's like a maybe a two to four month program, and you can become. Um, full, have a career in two to four months and we will accept new grad. Yeah. That's so I, let me ask a question. If someone is, let's say they're working as a clinical support um, specialist uh -huh. and they really are wanting to maybe transfer into doing medical assisting, do you all offer any kind of tuition reimbursement, any kind of training dollars towards yes. that? If someone is saying, oh, you know what? I want to stay within the SWOP community, but I want to do something different. Sure. Yes. So we do have... Um, um, tuition reimbursement. Okay. So um, it depends. Um, I don't think it's like a, you, you have to attend the program and then you submit 
your receipts. Okay. So it's like semester by semester. So these short programs, I'm not sure how we would go through our uh, learning and development department. Okay. And I would, my advice, if they were to come on and they were already in an entry level role, to submit a request and get the roadmap on how to navigate that, Ooh, what to do mm -hmm. and what to, they could expect before they enter into a program and expect one thing and it's really another way. Yeah. Okay. So um, I'll let Rachel talk more about that patient advocate because I don't know too much about that role okay. that's on her side. <laughs> Thank okay. you, Jackie. So the patient advocate, um, this is an individual um, who connects people who may have not, who are, who may not be uh, insured. So they probably, they find uh, programs and resources to get the person enrolled. So this was pretty heavy a few years ago with the Obamacare or uh, also known as ACA, the Affordable Care Act. This is what this role is about. So this is about meeting, um, enrolling our patients, making sure they have the right, um, but they're, you know, insured. And so they're helping them navigate different programs, providing education and guidance on how to obtain such a uh, coverage so and besides the list of these opportunities ladies and gents um or uh we have more opportunities on our website um it's just more than these career opportunities if you're looking for something um um maybe that that's not medical or involved in dental then we also have you know more uh, positions that are in operations so we have a lot of opportunities. We're looking for career but like-minded people like you all, and we would love for you to apply. Uh, we'll definitely review your resumes and things of that sort. So, okay. and if you when you apply, I'm gonna be optimistic. Optimistic when you apply. When they apply, yes. When you That's apply, right. can you please? And when it said, "How did you hear about it?" Can you put when job fair, please? Yes, that would be awesome. When job fair, we would love to um, know about. Um, the participants that were on this website, and we like to provide that feedback to win. Yes, yes, we would love that. Thank you for that. We do have a couple of questions. So when you oh, guys okay. are ready, we've got a yes. couple of questions that are coming up in our um, Q&A box. Okay. So someone's interested in that community support specialist. What kind of, what's the salary range for that? Okay, we just recently, um, as soon as Rako's <laughs> go ahead. Sorry, Jackie. Go ahead. Uh -uh, Rico, you stay fancy. We love it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the community support role, um, it the bottom um, of the uh, hourly rate is seventeen thirty per hour, and that position um, started that converts to about thirty six thousand dollars per year, and the minimum requirement for that position is high school diploma, but with that you need to have like at least four years of behavioral health, like that intensive mm -hmm. mental health tech position. Mm -hmm. You stay in that position for about three to four years. You, you know, gain some skills in working with the behavioral health population. Um, yeah, you'd be a perfect candidate for that role. Okay. Or the next step would be an associate in maybe two years. You'd be that same direct care position or that PCA or uh, someone who works <laughs> as a, a CNA or MA working maybe like in nursing home. We have a lot of people coming like working out of nursing home facilities and they come in and they're a perfect fit. Um, so other than that, bachelors straight out of school with maybe like a psychology major, liberal arts or criminal um, law, criminal justice, um, we will take new grads. Okay. Yeah, so that position um, is 40 hours a week. Um, basic core hours, eight to five. No on call. We have a crisis team that handles any calls, of, you know, okay. that come in over the weekend or at night. Mm -hmm. um, they pick that up, but um, yeah. So we have uh, medical and dental and 401k, and we do have eight paid holidays um, and a personal day that you can use um, per calendar year. Okay. We give generous paid off time, depending on um, your role. You get um, generous paid off time that you can use day by day or hour by hour, depending on your schedule. Okay, okay. So we have another question. Um, someone, because they're, they're ready to apply, so I want to make sure that we're able to get all, all right. the questions in. Um, they have an MBA in finance and accounting, but they would like to switch roles and look into opportunities like that patient advocate. 
because they want to serve their community, but they don't have a lot of healthcare ex experience. How would they get started at somewhere like Swope to get into that healthcare field, to be able to serve their community, but also start a career in that? That's a, real, that's a really great question. Mm -hmm. So thinking of a career change. Um, so basically, um, just kind of like what Jackie said, this position only requires an individual to have a high school or GED and maybe a couple of years um, or so in the healthcare setting. Um, but in, in, in the bachelor's degree is highly preferred. Um, and they also require that this person has some type of knowledge about, uh, you know, programs. However, I believe that if the uh, manager, you know, wants to take an opportunity or take a chance on an individual, then they certainly would, um, just because they see their enthusiasm and the energy and that they are solely wanting to work with our clients in our community. Um, I'm sure that could be a possibility unless they stepped into a role as clinic support specialist. And I'm, I'm not thinking, I'm thinking with their background, sorry about that, with their background, um, they might be too more too much of an entry level role. But yeah, if they're interested, we can probably talk a little bit more. And um, I could definitely alert the hiring manager for this position, you know, about that. So talk to me a little bit about how you want them to apply. Okay, so we have a website and I, um, Jackie, is it on our um, one of our the next slide? Oh, okay. oh, this is just pictures of the organ of our organization. So um, that's our, um, just about Kansas City. So we try to attract people to come to Kansas City. So just a little bit of like we like to show. So, um, but you can go to the next slide. But um, this is our contact information. If you see that website below where it says www.sophealth.org, that will take you straight to our website. Um, there are two places, um, everyone, that you can still apply. So once you, once you click there, you can see on the top, it just says careers. You can click there, that'll take you right to our career page. And, or if you go to a tab called, who are we? It'll also list careers. So, um, or you can contact Jackie and I, thank you. You can contact Jackie and I um, at the contact information right there. And we'll be more than happy to, you know, walk through any questions you may have or answer any questions you may have. Or if you want to send your resume, um, you can send it to the hrsfopel.org. But we highly recommend and prefer that you do visit our website and complete an online application. Okay. So it looks like we've got something in the chat box. Okay. That was um, Latoya put in, she's my coworker. She put in your website oh. so they can make sure to get that as okay, well, awesome. because we want them to go through that, go through, tell us a little bit about your interview process. So is that now, is that all in person or is that virtual? Talk to us a little bit about, because we know that they're going to apply because you've got these great positions open. Tell them all about that next step. What kind of, what walk us through that? Well, so it depends. A great question. Thank you for asking. So um, some positions do require you to be on site, just be like our medical assistants, our dental assistants, LPNs, um, just because that's how our hiring managers prefer. Um, mm -hmm. We do, and there are some managers who prefer to interview through Zoom and or Teams. So I think it kind of depends on the position and on the individual um, with uh, regards to how they want to handle. But so far, you know, we've been having on-site panel interviews, um, but I think with this variant kind of hyping back up, they might kind of, you know, um, scoot back or, you know, and probably continue to do it by Zoom and or Teams. So because and I know we're that healthcare and we're pretty okay. much here yeah. almost every day. So it's a little different. Okay. Most, of, most of our positions, not all, but most of our positions are on-site. Okay. And do we you just have practice it? safely. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have a question because we usually have that. Are there any, so, so if someone that do like scheduling or possibly in IT or any of those positions remote, because there's always some interest um, in remote positions. That is a good question. Um, well, so our I'll, community support position is community based. Kinda, they work from home. The okay. mix that we have to come in if the client could navigate themselves or needed a little bit of extra mm -hmm. help, but their mm -hmm. office start point is generally at home okay yeah they we have a place for them to come print sit come you know navigate all through the um, facilities but uh, that kind of is a position that is a remote position okay um some of our therapy positions mm -hmm. they're doing virtual therapy um mm -hmm. yeah okay so so we've got just a few more minutes talk to me about 
that ideal candidate that you want to apply, how they're going to be able to advance. Just give me just a little, just a little kind of tie that up where you want them to apply, how you want them to apply, and what skill sets you really. It sounds like you're looking for people with passion and people who want that career and going forward and helping our community. So just talk to me a little bit about that. Who you, Jackie? You want to take it or? You can okay. take. Oh, okay. So here's the deal. And that's a really, then thank you for that question again. Um, so our president and CEO, Jaron Raven, definitely is looking for someone or wants Jackie and I to recruit people who are compassionate and who um, have integrity and who will go out their way to serve our clients and our communities. Um, previously, last year, we were charged with doing pre screen interviews and there were certain um, guidelines we ask questions about, and it came around, um, you know, why are you interested in working with the underserved? The, and, and, and why are you interested in working in community health? So I think people really need to, when they're looking at opportunities, they really need to go to one's employer and look at the mission and the vision and see if that, if those, you know, align with their values. And that's what we're looking for because, you know, community health is different from a private practice, right? And you're dealing with patients and clients who may not always adhere to, um, you know, their medical plans and just being patient and making sure that you're, you know, uh, being customer service friendly. So, and like Jackie stated early on, we make care visible. And that's exactly whether it's through, um, when you first walk through the doors as folks, sometimes people are shocked coming to our organization because I guess they think community health, we're gonna have a, I don't know what kind of health center, but it's a beautiful, facility yes. and um and and we just want somebody who is like-minded and wants to work and wants to provide it and put a smile on their face and put a smile on patients faces and we all work together whether you know Jackie and I serve our internal customers or externally so Jackie did you want to add anything to that um you said it all you said it just okay. perfectly fine okay all right so, so, yeah so that. We're pretty and excited, but again, be sure to visit www.swelphealth.org okay. and um, click on careers. And I promise you'll see a list of opportunities and we'll look at those applications. We need a well, lot of good people. Thank you all so much. Yeah. Thank you all so much. Um, like they said, if you have any questions, go to their website. You'll be able to find all of those careers. Um, this is a great organization for you all that have that passion to go out and help the community. Yes. A great way to start a career in healthcare. With sounds like pretty good hours. You guys are saying Monday through yep. Friday, eight to five. You're not saying like you're on call, working midnight hours. So that's no. going to be great. Um, any more questions? Anything else you want to add before we close out this afternoon? Well, I should say, uh, and my apologies, and I should say that um, um, our intensive mental health tech, because that's a different type of uh, field, they are uh, seven days a week. So that's okay. a little different. That's a little yeah. different. I probably should have uh, made yeah. that uh, noted that on the on the slide. But intensive mental health tech, because it's in our residential houses, okay, that's a little bit different with those hours. Yeah, but and where are those houses? Are they throughout the city, throughout the metro area? They are. Our main one is off the plaza on Blue Parkway. You okay. can get to every single one within 10 or 15 minutes. So okay. they're located Westport, Midtown, and then there's one, yeah. So within 15 to 20 minutes of the central location, they're all in Kansas City, Missouri, okay. and they are open 24 seven, but we have three shifts and okay. 40 hours. So it'd be five days, you get two days off. And okay. then we, have, we also have part-time and PRN roles. Okay. And yeah. we have one last question. Are vaccines required to work at Swope Health? <laughs> you know, but that's funny. We got that. We get that question. So the organization is pushing. Um, we are encouraging strongly because we're in healthcare, mm -hmm. And so we are strongly encouraging associates uh, to uh, get the vaccine. I'm not sure what 2022 is going to look like you all. Um, um, right now, but, um, you know, when people are coming, we're not, it's a, it's a, it's your decision. So for okay. right now. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you all so much for giving us that information about Swope. I would encourage everybody to go out and apply. Thank you all so much for joining us on our virtual job fair today. Everybody go out and have a good day. If you have any questions, you can also contact us here at WIN, which our website is www.kcwen.org. And we'd be happy to connect you if you need some help with that as well. Thank all right, you everybody. all. Thank you. Hey, bye have bye a great everyone. day. All right. Bye-bye.